is that it's the same API on Windows Phone and on Windows Desktop. So if you have a Windows uh, 7 machine, it has location services built into it. And um, if you write code for uh, .NET 4 or WPF, this is forwarding again. If you write code for WPF um, or .NET 4 on the desktop using location, you can take that same code and run it on the phone. So it's a great, uh, a great story for cross-application usage of APIs. So here's the image that you kind of saw a sneak picture of before. Um, here's my phone in the middle, and there are three ways that we can get location on the phone. The first one, which everybody knows about, is GPS, right? Satellites in the sky. Um, and GPS is really, really good for getting high accuracy data. Right? You can get it down to a few meters. But GPS has a bunch of drawbacks. Uh, firstly, it takes more power. Right? It's a, you spin up the GPS, your battery starts to drain. Another one is that it's not the fastest thing in the world. It can take some time to get a GPS fix, especially if you've moved a long way since you last got a fix. So you got a fix. I got a fix in Seattle. I jump on the plane. I come to Las Vegas. It might take me a while to get a fix because I have to find all the satellites. And the other thing is there's, there's no way GPS would work for me right now because I'm indoors. So GPS is good for high accuracy but has a bunch of drawbacks. So the next thing is we can use cell tower triangulation. And cell tower has a different set of um, attributes. Um, the accuracy isn't so good, um, you know, maybe a few hundred meters, maybe a few kilometers in, in certain places. But it uses the cell radio, and the radio is typically already on, so it's not using any more power than using the, the phone by itself. And it's also very, very quick, because again, the radio is already on, you already know what towers you're associated with. But uh, cell towers obviously isn't going to work if you're in the wilderness or you're on a cruise somewhere where there's no cell towers around. So it has, it has drawbacks too. And then the third one that we have is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi triangulation based on hotspot names. And Wi-Fi is kind of middle of the road. Um, it's, it can be more accurate than a cell tower, but it's not as accurate as GPS. Um, it uses more power than the cell radio, but less power than GPS. It's faster than GPS, but not as fast as cell. And its accuracy and its the usefulness kind of depends on how many hotspots there are and how, you know, whether we have cloud source data to say whether or not you know, where you are based on these um, Wi-Fi hotspots. So it's good in urban areas where there's lots of Wi-Fi points for us to get access to. But again, not very good in, in the wilderness or out in, in an ocean liner where there's no Wi-Fi hotspots. And so, there's these three different ways of getting location, but we don't require you to know these different things and figure out, do I use GPS or cell or Wi-Fi? What happens is we have this combination of smart software on the device and a back-end service. So if you only need a low accuracy location, you don't need GPS, we can figure out what cell tower you're associated with, with figure out any Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, figure out if the phone already knows where that is, so it might have cached data from a previous lookup, if not, it can talk to our back-end service, and our back-end service can say, oh, I know other people have been here, and we've been crowdsourcing real GPS data from the people in this location, and we know exactly where you are. So the, so the cloud, which is a free service, will actually help you to get accurate details without necessarily firing up the GPS, wasting battery, and taking um, more time. And another thing that location service will do is not just give you latitude and longitude, which is useful but kind of not useful. It will also do resolving of civic addresses. So you can get from the location service, you can get a lat long. Here it's uh, like 36 degrees minus 115 degrees uh, where we are today, approximately. You can take that, send it to the service, and it'll come back and say you're in Las Vegas. You know, you're at the uh, Mandalay Bay, you're in Nevada, United States. Las Vegas. So it does the heavy lifting as well of reverse encoding latitude and longitude to actual civic addresses that are actually useful to you, because you can then take that data, you know, do uh, web lookups on it, or present that to the user. So I want to do a demo of this. We'll see how, we'll see how well it goes based on lack of networking and an inability to run the device. But I'm going to do it on the emulator, and I'm going to use the, um, the mock I told you about. So here we are. I'm going to add a new page to my application.
I'm going to call it location. And again, in the interest of time, I'm going to drag and drop in some XAML. And again, there's nothing, there's nothing super special here. There's a, a button. I'm going to click on it to, uh, to kick off the, the uh, work on the location service. There's a text block where I'm going to put the status of the device, so it can be you know, initializing or waiting for data or having data. A text block where I'm going to put the position, so the latitude and longitude. And then a text block where I'm going to put that reverse coded address. And if I look at the code, again, I'm going to just insert this and then walk through it. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a geo coordinate watcher, and that is the thing that you use to get geo coordinates, and we're going to get a civic address resolver. This is a thing that resolves latitude and longitude into real civic addresses. Now, when the user clicks on the get location button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new geolocation watcher, and here I'm going to say whether I want high accuracy, which means I really need to know where I am to like a few meters, and I'm willing to take the hit in time and battery to get a GPS lock. Or in this case, I'm just going to ask for low accuracy data, because I know, I know there's no GPS that's going to work in here. So I'm going to ask for low, which means I'll get it back faster, but it might not be as accurate. Then similar pattern to what you've seen before. It's an event-based system. There's a status changed event, which will fire when the status of the device changes from initializing to getting data, et cetera. And there's a position changed event, which will fire when, the device, when I get a lock in the device, and also when I move around with the device. And then I'm going to start the geolocation, so kick off the location uh, services. And then for resolving the addresses, I'm going to create a civic address resolver. And again, it's, it, there is a synchronous version, but I'm going to use an asynchronous pattern. I'm going to hook into the address resolved, sorry, resolve address completed event and do some work when I get information back. And so here's the interesting things that happen on events. First is status changed. Again, I'm just going to update the text block, nothing special. Dispatch to the UI thread, because this will come in on a background thread. When position changes, I'm going to do a couple of things. Again, dispatched to the UI thread, because it comes in on the background. If the position is unknown, so let's say I'd asked for high accuracy data, um, I was in the wilderness, um, but GPS didn't come back in time. It might say you've got an unknown position. So in that case, I'm just going to say position is unknown. If my position is not unknown, ergo it's known, I'm going to put my latitude, my longitude, and my horizontal accuracy into that, first, in that second text block. And then I'm going to kick off an asynchronous address resolve operation, which will take that latitude and longitude and come back to me with a civic address. And then finally, when the address resolve completes, if the address was unknown, I'm going to say the address was unknown. If the address was not unknown, I'm going to put the address line one into that address text box. So the basic flow is I start the device. I get a status change that says I'm waiting for data. I've got some data. I get a position change saying, I know where I am. Here's my latitude and longitude. And then I throw that over to the service to say, now tell me where that really is, because I don't understand latitude and longitude. And it gives them back an address. Now, this is all coded against the, um, the actual assemblies and the actual types that, use the, that the location service uses. But since I'm having trouble with the projector here and I can't show you the device that has the real location on it, what I'm going to do is um, show you that mock I, I talked to you about. So I'm going to comment out system device location and just say using mixed demo helpers. And I'm going to put this, this code in my blog so you can use it in your applications. And what this does is it has um, a fake version of location service. It exposes the same APIs, um, you know, fires things on the background thread, uh, simulates uh, pausing between um, you know, notification updates, etc. But um, it all does it with fake data. And I'm going to initialize it with some data for Las Vegas. 